Doody doody doo doo. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I'm an illustrator. And today I get the beautiful, beautiful chance to be your instructor. So, hello. Welcome. As we wait for somebody to join our chat, I'm going to explain what we are going to be doing today. Today, we are going to be drawing a lot of faces. Why? Because I am perfecting a certain drawing technique and I want to get the ratios down the way that I want. So today's lesson is going to be mostly about heads and understanding certain features about Understanding how to get round features, how to understand the distances that we have in our faces, where do the little bumps come from, and how is it that some people can see these things really easy and some people, you know, struggle so much with them. So, that will be our lesson today. So strap in, grab your sketchbooks. If you guys learn anything, make sure to consider uh, donating or subscribing to the channel. Okay. Lia Lovrik. Hi. Indravihit Gosh. Hello. How are you guys doing today? You guys are gonna stay for the lesson. Uh, you guys can always like and share the stream. Like and share. You guys can ask questions if you guys feel like you guys want something answered. Priority will just go to those that donate. Hello, Forrest. Anybody that donates gets an automatic answer to their questions. So that is just the only caveat. I don't like exclusivity, but I do like priorities. How long did it take you to get to where you are with drawing? Well, I am 40 years old. It didn't take me 40 years to get here, but it's just uh, you're an ever evolving project. You're always going to grow and change and learn new things you're not going to you shouldn't measure it by how long it took you to get there you're already like you're at a certain place however long it took me to get here is irrelevant that's not going to be relevant to you because you're your own person and the way that I had my life go doesn't relate to how you will live your life so a lot of the times we put uh, people on a pedestal or something like that without really understanding what their lives have been. And a lot of the times that leads to a misunderstanding of, you know, like maybe your own skill sets or the way that you can approach your career. Can you draw my profile photo? This is what I see, dude. There you go. That's what I see. I just see a blob. There you go. That's you. All right. Do you know what dragon puppet is? Nope. I do not know. I'm going to assume it's a, a little puppet that is like a dragon. And he has little wings. And he has little hands. And he's a puppet, so there's a hand controlling him. Me, 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 me. And then you have like a like a shell, right? <laughs> and then he would have like maybe like a dragon castle he's gonna go get the princess <laughs> so 
So for some reason, I struggle with expanding and shortening features of the body and the face. Um, a lot of people have issues with spacing, and that's because they don't really know where they're supposed to put things. So I'm gonna, uh, I can explain that to you guys relatively simple. What are you doing, mustache? What are you doing? Why are you always eating something? Uh, are donation questions limited to today's art topic? No, you can request any topic whenever you guys donate. Whenever you guys donate, you guys can ask whatever you guys want. Essentially, the people that donate get to dictate what the lessons of the day are. So, and I find it really fun. <laughs> it makes it so the people that actually really need the information and that really, really want it are going to search for it. Uh, I normally do uh, like all my streams with like direct lessons over on TikTok. So you guys can go tune into those free ones. Uh, this one's free as well, but, you know, this one gets priority over people that don't. It doesn't have to be much either. It can be like a dollar. It can be whatever you guys are willing to give. It's a tip-based situation. All right, so, yeah, I've been drawing faces recently, and it's uh, it's been really fun to understand that all I need to draw is the eye sockets and the nose canal. So I don't have to draw the entirety of the shape. I can just draw up to there. If I split any shape in four, I get two sections. And I can draw my heads from there. From there, the top of that triangle indicates the middle of my eye. This indicates my eyebrows. This is my nose. So anywhere out from there becomes my nose. And then, and only then, do I draw my jaw because my nose sometimes is gonna cover a little bit of my mouth. You know, so sometimes there's gonna be situations where you require that to overlap a little bit. So you draw all this section after, and it makes it a little bit more manageable. To me at least, this makes a lot more sense than most of the other ways of drawing that I've seen. Uh, imagine a chimp addicted to bananas, so, okay. I see you have a tendency to start drawing with a unique box for the head. No, not at all. I can draw from anything. It doesn't matter what you draw. The goal is to identify a handful of things inside of these shapes, and then from there, you draw your character. Regardless of the shape that you choose, you can have characters with all sorts of shapes, dynamics, or circles, triangles, whatever. As long as you identify a triangle inside of your face, you can set yourself little guides that allow you to draw a human skeleton really quickly. Because it's not about, it's not about the, <laughs> the initial shape, it's about finding the things inside. Which book should we start with first of yours? Uh, I don't really... The books aren't sequenced. The books are reference books. So all the books that I have are in my bio. So you guys can go look in my bio and you guys can find them there. In most of my videos, I have links to them as well. 
but the books are entire reference books. So they're entire books filled to the brim with sketches so that you guys can use to learn or reference for your own drawings. So they're filled to the brim with different drawings like this so that you guys can just pick and choose something and you guys don't have to think about actually what you're supposed to want to draw. So you'll have anatomy, you'll have animals, you'll have all that stuff. And all you got to do is flip to a random page and then that's why they called art block. <clears throat> I call them art block because they help you get rid of your art block. Yeah, they're all pretty uh, pretty nice, like to just like carry around and stuff. But I also love the fact that you can download them as a PDF, because then you can just open up on Pre uh, Procreate. You can open them up in any other program like that, like Photoshop, and then use any of the sketches for your initial drawings. So you guys can use them for your projects, for your work. The whole concept of giving you guys access to those sketches is so that you can make your life easier. And not just uh, by teaching you something, but making it easier so that you guys don't have to really come up with shit whenever you guys have to come up with something. Sometimes those valuable hours allow you to spend a little bit more time learning, a little bit more time doing the things that we want instead of, you know, doing all the mindless work that we do for other people. I wish I could stay, but I'm at school and have bad internet. Oh, dude, don't worry about it. You relax, don't chill. All these videos are later on on YouTube anyways. So you get, can always tune into them later. Have you liked? No, no, I haven't liked drawing since I was a child. Uh, I got into this when I was way later in life. I got into it when I was like 19, 18 or so. Um, it was either this it was either go into artwork or go into uh, law or something similarly that would be, you know, putting my, my talents into use because my talents aren't artistic. My talents come in communication, right? What my skill, my superpower is in drawing. My superpower is communication. My power is that I can talk to you guys and explain to you guys things. It's not that I can draw better than you. It's not that I can... Uh, outdo you in an illustration competition or anything like that necessarily. It's more that I can actually explain the things that are really hard and my power is talking. It's not drawing. So I have found that over my lifetime, I have had a very cool power to either charm the pants off people or to get what I want from talking. And that is a super powerful tool. No, <clears throat> I try to use it for good. Uh, a lot of people, uh, this is going to sound really funny, incredibly funny. And it's really silly. But somebody compared me to the charm of a cultist. <laughs> they were like, you have the charm of a cult leader. That is dangerous if you point it in the wrong direction. <laughs> but I do believe that with the right actual, like, you know, like power behind that, like understanding that your communication powers, like actually move people, when you use that for good, 
not in a way to benefit myself, but in a way to make you guys actually benefit yourselves, then I think I can put that little baby superpower to use. And I have so done so over the last seven years, and I have helped over... So far, our follower count is at a little bit over 500,000. <clears> it's like it's 600K, but I'm counting about 100K for overlap. So we have about half a million people that follow me. If I can change the life of maybe two or three of those, right? I have succeeded. And I can honestly say that it's it's been worth it. But it's been much more than that. Is the transition from pencil to pen lengthy? Uh, why do you need the feel to transition? You know, the only reason that I draw with pen the only reason that I would draw with pen is because I needed a challenge. That's it. It wasn't because of like, I just needed to have something to challenge me. It wasn't so that uh, for any other reason, really, it was more like an ego boost. <laughs> I, I really, really, I, I had the ability to draw something really cool with uh, pencil, but I kept on seeing everybody draw stuff like with Sharpies and it was like, how do you draw a pin up with just a pen? Like, that's so hard to do. Like, how could you possibly ever do that? How could you possibly ever think of drawing a cute girl with just pen? That's insane. You would never be able to do that effectively. Mm -mm. <laughs> you just get used to doing the things that you really want to learn to do. If you obsess over it for a little bit and you just allow yourself to have fun in the journey, everything becomes a lot easier, right? But you have to learn to prioritize the things that you really want to get out of this. In this case, like your art career and stuff like that. You need to learn to prioritize what you really want and what you think you want. But when you learn, when you start learning about that stuff, it, everything just starts getting narrowed down and you start being happier with what you know how to do. And the things that you don't know how to do, you get happy because now you start pursuing things that you've always wanted, but now with knowledge, everything becomes a lot easier. The hair was a little bit too <clears throat> God rebuke the unclean spirit of the name of Jesus and the God bless you and your family and your wonderful films and I make loyal. Shut up. No, it, this is not the place for your bullshit. Okay? You can, I'm going to put you on timeout. 24 hour timeout. I'm not going to block you. Not gonna block you because everybody deserves the knowledge, the ability to learn. I have to give them the the opportunity to think that that was just maybe a mistake on their part, right? How to draw a T Rex face body? Yeah, we can we can talk about that. A T Rex, huh? So a T Rex. So a T Rex is a big lizard. So lizards, like dragons and stuff like that, the easiest way to draw them is by drawing a circle and then drawing a triangle at the front. That triangle is going to be the size of your snout. Okay, the little snout, like your upper teeth, whatever. That's going to be the size of it. It kind of looks like a bird. The moment that you extend this line in, you divide that mouth into two. Now you have an upper and a lower jaw. From there, add a circle 
to represent the eye socket of your dragon or your reptile or your dinosaur. A little nostril in the front. From there, the eye socket is gonna, the eye is gonna be sunken into that eye socket, so it's normally gonna be a little bit darker. And then this little circle has a little bit of girth. And that is going to be the little tiny thing that goes around your eye, the eyebrow ridge. Okay. And this is where you would add little tiny bombs and stuff like that to be able to get the detail of a reptile. <laughs> From there, your neck is going to go and be really thick. So it's going to go out. And it's uh, for a T-Rex, it comes down at an angle. And then you end up with a rib cage. Your rib cage is going to be either a circle or an egg. But it's gonna be similar to this shape. From there, you're going to add your collarbone in the form of a compass coming from the top and the bottom and expanding to where your arms are gonna be. The arms for a T-Rex are really small, so you don't really need to draw much. This becomes the back side of your body. This is where your tail would come out and stuff like that. So follow the back, okay, the spine until the tail and then just curl it around as much as you want. I don't know if how much they actually use to curl. I think they go completely straight, honestly. Okay, you're gonna add two hip bones attached to your spine to the spine. You have to attach it to the spine, okay? From there, you have your legs. For the actual T-Rex, it's a thigh, a thigh, the backbone that goes up, aka your calf, the flat part of your foot, into your toes. So now we have one leg. The other leg just happens to go out a little bit that way. But it's the same treatment, okay? Connect the bottom part of your chest with this part right here, expanding into wherever the tail is gonna be. Draw a little shadow and then draw a person for scale. If you want a dragon, you can add little bumps, you can add little wings. Okay. <laughs> And when you want to change the direction of the phase, check it out. We started with a triangle, right? Well, let's change the triangle and then change the way that's shaped. Oh, that gives you your jaw. Hmm. <laughs> that triangle already gives you the underside of your jaw. So it becomes really easy to just rotate a triangle and come up with the bottom part of your jaw stretch. Boom. How would you draw the T-Rex from behind? Well, from behind, you would have the tail, and then the tail would expand back and curve up, and then you would have the bulk of your body 
the tail would connect on the bottom. And then you would have your hip bones. Just by how things would block out. <clears throat> you would end up with the flat of your foot showing first, your nails, and then the calf, and then your thigh. <clears throat> your spine, your head would come up from that circle that you came up with over here into a circle and into whatever side thingies you have and whatever detail. Something like that. Maybe have the arms a little bit out. Yeah. Something like that. <clears throat> Draw my PFP. No, shut up. No, nope, I ain't drawing your shit. that was thanks to the donation. Thank you for that. I hope that that little baby lesson helped you out. Said donations get you the answer to whatever you feel like getting answered. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you guys have me for about about an hour. I struggle on how to draw a dark wing duck. Um, okay, so I don't really have any reference in front of me, but I'm guessing it's because of the whole like eye thing. So your eyes for cartoons like dark wing duck and some Disney song like cartoons, a lot of the times people have issues because of the eyes right here. They don't know how to like draw the eyes and thin the shape or whatever. But it's normally just like two ovals. It's like an oval and then you overlap an oval. That same size oval, you also overlap it a little bit. Then you have access to those sort of like eyes. Uh, the lessons that I do over video chat, like the private lessons are about an hour and a half or so. Uh, depends on what the topics are that you are wanting to go over. Uh, it might be a little quicker if you grasp the concepts really, really quick. But most of the time, they last about like an hour and a half. You put down the pen and go draw some water from the well. Huh? Okay. You are an interesting man. Probably a kid. Yeah, so kids are weird, man. Like, people are weird nowadays. Uh, everybody feels entitled to, like, things. It's really interesting. It's really silly. Because uh, the more entitled you are, the less likely people are to do things for you. And people don't understand that. Like, they just don't. Like, they don't comprehend the concept of... Uh, Humility brings forth uh, the best in people, you know? And when you lose that, because of, I don't have no idea what makes, like, some of the younger people, like, feel so weirdly entitled to everything. But the more that you guys feel like that, the less likely things are going to happen for you. That's just not how the, uh, the little world works. Can you draw a robot dog? I could. Do I also paint with oils and acrylics? Absolutely not. They take too long. I have I have a zero attention span. 
Like, I can barely sit down and, like, finish watching a TV show. Uh, so sitting there and waiting for paint to dry would be such a monumentally, like, taxing thing on my brain <laughs> that I would not be able to actually, like, enjoy it. You know, it's not enjoyable to me to have to wait around for things. Like, it's just... Nope, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't work like that for me. <laughs> Any tips on the person getting started? I have no experience. Um, you'd better love it. That is the biggest piece of advice I will ever be able to give anybody. You gotta love it. You gotta really love it. Like, like, because you'll be tested. You'll be told that your shit is garbage. You'll be told that you're not doing something right with your life for following this. You will be told that you're wasting your time. You will be told that you're not doing something that somebody else is doing. You will be told to draw like Disney. You will be told, why don't you just make your little scribbles and blah, 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 blah. You will be told, oh, but it's just art. You will be told a lot of things. And if you don't really love it, you'll quit. There's no if for butts or coconuts. It, it just happens. And I see it all too often. So you gotta love it. Because if you don't love it, like you're gonna lose the passion for it really quick. Mm -mm. Or that, very, 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 very pretty, beautiful, and by the way, I'm gay, and I like you, okay? Cool. Join the club? By the way, I saw some of your old videos, and they really helped me get an idea of how to draw my character much better. Cool. Wildgun, have you drawn on your iPad with Procreate? Recently? No, not recently. Uh, actually, no, I lie. I I've been doing some commissions, so I'm working on like those slowly, so I have touched Procreate. I like Procreate. I like it that it records your your features. So you can like... Just draw, and then it records every step. Super Saiyan Blue! Good thing, because I didn't have yellow highlight. Hi, Abigail. Can I draw a doll? <laughs> so, dog. That's what I look like right now. I have like a really long mustache. And I'm growing it out so that I can have a longer mustache. <laughs> so right now it's like a redneck. Oh, I'm going to show you guys so fast. So I'm starting to grow out my mustache, right? And I want to grow it even longer. But while I grow it out, I want to have the, the redneck stash. So it's like, whoop. I need to grow it out to here, right? I need to grow this out. But until then, I have a redneck stash. Boom. Can you draw a zombie? I totally can draw a zombie. Beep, 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 boo. Yeah, you guys just gotta like, just do that. You guys gotta do that. You guys gotta do that. Boom, boom, boom. 
Okay, go, go do all this stuff. And once you guys are done, you guys can come ask them. See, the way that I like to learn to draw is to not leave anything to the imagination. Like, I don't, I know where every point of my body connects. So therefore, I always know where the next connecting point goes. Learning how to draw through your shapes is the key to this. Like, for example, what I'm looking at right now, right now, it's not just lines. To me, it's a little boxy shape that got split in half by my eyebrow. So now I have the side of my face, I have the middle of my face, and I just replicate this on the edge, and I have myself a skeletal system. By doing that, I know that the middle of this is my ear, and this connects to the chin, creating my jaw. From there, whatever distance this is, it's going to be matched underneath, and it's going to be connected by my spine. So my spine, which is in the back of my shape, is gonna have these two little circles and you're just gonna connect them. And now you have yourself a head. And the little compass gives you access to your back muscles and your shoulders and later on your pectorals and your arms and your shoulders. So all that stuff comes from that little circle. Understanding that your head is only a spine, volume, one circle, and another circle connected. Doo -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo. Guess what? You can draw your necks really easy. Like, really easy. <laughs> like, really, really easy. Because this is easy to do. <laughs> Spider-Man? Oh, that, that could be Spider-Man. Would you please draw a lighthouse? Yes, absolutely. A lighthouse? Let me look at some reference so that I can draw a cool lighthouse. Lighthouse. Cool. All right, let's look at some lighthouses. Okay, that's kind of cool. So most lighthouses are in water. So the first thing we got to do is draw some sort of water. And then they are sticking out like in an island most of the time. So let's draw a little bulb, like an island coming out. And then they seem to be like a cylinder in a house. So the actual like lighthouse is the little cylinder. Then goes up, we can draw the base and we can draw the up and just connect the two circles. And then you have a cylinder. And then for a house, we need a box. So I'm gonna draw a box. I'm gonna draw that same box behind it and I'm gonna connect the edges. Now I have a little box. So that little box could be my little lighthouse. Uh, a lot of them seem to have like little pointy tips. So I'm just gonna bring the middle of this box up. And now I have myself a little cabin. Dope. Awesome, awesome. So now the lighthouse is gonna have, you know, a thing at the top. So this little cylinder, I'm gonna replicate it a couple times and just change the size of it. And then I'm just gonna start connecting the edges and see what comes up. Cool. Dope, but kind of looks like something. I'll add a little tip. And this is gonna have a little bit of a guardrail. This connects back to the base. This is gonna have a couple layers. So I'm just gonna draw some circles and I'm gonna choose the front side to use that as my guidelines. 
then each one of these steps is gonna have, uh, apparently they have like windows and shit. So I'm gonna draw a little box on each one of these. And then I'm gonna draw a little box inside, darker to create depth. Cool. I'm gonna repeat that over here. Uh, these seem to be in a step. So each one of these seems to be a little bit step into the other one. And they seem to change color. So we're gonna change one, color, color. All right, so we're gonna do the roof of this, give this a little guardrail, as well as a balcony into a cove where they can fish and stuff. Maybe we have like a little character with a hat and a fishing boat. So he's gonna be chilling there. He's gonna have a door and not much detail to the house because we don't really need that. Uh, let's see, what else do they have? They tend to have, uh, well, we can make other boxes. If we make another box right here, duplicate the box, do the same treatment, we can start adding additions to his house. Maybe he has a garden on the side that's to the rooftop. He has like some shrubberies and stuff. And then maybe this walks down onto Cove, and maybe he has a boat. Cool. There you go. Now you have a lighthouse. Wow, amazing. I'm being sarcastic. So you're being sarcastic that it's amazing or you're being sarcastic? Be like, I don't understand your comment. <laughs> your comment is confusing me. And I don't know if you're insulting me or you're like <laughs> not. Anyways, thank you for the donation, and I hope that your lighthouse looks appropriately cool, and you can see how simple it was to just build some basic shapes to be able to create. Reference will always be your friend, and perspective will always be your buddy. Yeah, when they say that they're being sarcastic, it means the opposite. I don't understand. I don't understand the reason why people just feel like they're being silly, being mean. But it doesn't really make your hit like you you think. If anything, you just make a person that was willing to talk. Like I'm not gonna be affected by it, but if somebody is starting out, for example, and somebody acquires that sort of behavior. That person's not gonna be inclined to wanna share their work anymore. Uh, unfortunately, like we live in a society where, you know, it's really hard to be able to build up the courage to even come out and do anything like this. So, you know, like take it for however you want. I'm used to it. I've been dealing with this shit for like almost 40 years. So it's perfectly fine, but you might discourage someone from doing something great just by being dumb and being mean. So it's just, Something that to think about, maybe you don't give a fuck, but you know, you're hurting people. Be better. It's kind of what I imagine. Mm. 
Can you make a small ship for me? There. It's a small ship for you. You're welcome. Uh, can you draw, make a civilization? Yay. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> draw Sonic. You're welcome. <laughs> Ah, uh, these are funny. Uh, can you draw a sketch of your favorite character? My favorite character is just me. I like drawing myself. Like, call it ego or whatever, but it's my life, so I like drawing myself more than anything else. That's the reason I got into art, so I could draw myself doing things. So my favorite character, my favorite OC, OC is me. When is my next stream? I have them every day, like every day in the mornings, every day in the afternoons. I often I stream about two or three times a day. Why do I think of AI art? AI art is, it's cool. Some people get really, uh, really cool results with it. Uh, I don't think you need to be intimidated by a computer making a piece of art. Uh, if you're scared that AI is going to take your job, you're not confident enough in your art skills. That's, that's all I'm going to say. That's a lack of confidence on your end, as opposed to not necessarily like fear that you should be feeling. You should realize why. Why am I feeling scared that a computer might maybe be more creative than me? Really? Like, is, is if that's the fear, then then you don't give yourself enough credit. But, again, I mean, that's up to you. I'm not drawing Omni Man. I'm going to stop taking requests because you guys are spamming the chat. When people start spamming, uh, I don't feel like doing that stuff. I don't, I don't like, see, I'm a weird person. I'm a weird individual. I don't like being told what to do, but I like taking suggestions. So it's um, it's weird. <laughs> like the moment someone tells me what to do, I'm like, nah, nah, we're not doing that. I mean, AI art, it can be seen two different ways, right? One, it gives people that can't draw access to creating artwork. People that had never had the chance to be able to do anything creative because they don't have that ability now have access to being able to create things, which is a lovely sentiment. The problem comes with people that do AI art thinking that they are at the same level <laughs> as somebody that spent a long time working on their craft and being able to do it without the computer assistance. That is where the problem comes in. I'll give you one ten thousand dollars You can draw a Roman soldier. Ooh, I can draw a Roman soldier, but I don't want to take your money, so I'm not going to do it. 
Cause I don't need your money. I don't need your money. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, again, the moment that somebody in, like tries to entice me to do something with money, I'm also like, uh, nah. Nah, nah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm a weird human being, man. I, I care very little about financial things. I care more about the intent of people and actually like how and how they carry themselves. Like to me, it's more important that you're like really, 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 really into what you want to learn as opposed to you giving me money to teach you something. Like I don't take, I don't take students just because they give me money. That's... Like, I, I hate doing that. Like, you got to show me that you're going to want to do the work. Otherwise, like, you're wasting my time. Yeah, and I don't take a lot of students, by the way. That's why I give you guys free lessons here. That way, you guys don't need somebody like me to give you guys mentorship. You guys actually have access to all this stuff. And you guys don't have to hopefully spend any money or anything paying anybody this shit. Because all this knowledge is already free. It's already up there. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I love you drawing pictures. Hey, thank you. Could you possibly work for DreamWorks? I could. <laughs> I could very easily work for any of those studios. Uh, I have more than the qualifications and anything, but I don't want to. Like, that, that's the thing. I don't want to work for those studios. Like, absolutely no drive at all to work for a studio. Absolutely none. Like, zero, kaput, nada, finito. Why? Because when I create something, I want it to be known that it was me. I don't want to be a credit. I don't want to be a credit. I don't want to be blah, 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 executive producer and assistant. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. My ego's too big for that shit. <laughs> no, I didn't get into art to be able to uh, to be somebody else's uh, pawn. <laughs> no, no. I am either the whole thing or nothing. <laughs> like it's it's just the way that I am, right? I thrive of ego. Me, and I, I say this completely, like completely straight up with no justification ever, me ever giving you guys any reason to apologize for it. I am a very ego-driven human being. I like being told I'm doing something good. That's why I go into competitions. That's why I do things like teaching. That's why I do things like post online. And the thing is, most of us are the same, but we just don't want to admit it. Right? As an art form, just, just by simply wanting to create art, by wanting to get better at it, you are craving attention. Because you want to get better so more people see your work so that you can demonstrate that you're awesome. That's what we're all craving. But first of all, you're already awesome. So first of all, you don't have to worry too much about that stuff. Second of all, you're ready the moment that you feel confident. So you don't require years of experience and training to be able to get there. As long as you feel confident about something, you can pursue that, okay? Confidence is, that's more important. 
it's way more important to be confident than to be good. Because if you, if you can be all the greatness in the world, if you don't have the confidence to even like remotely show your work, even if you're the best, you are never going to make it. Because the whole concept of being an artist for a living means that you have to make a living. <laughs> it's in the word. It's in the phrase, making a living. You need to make money to make a living so you can pay for your stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you are saying, Sabine Christagu, but I hope that it's a good comment and appreciative. But you can translate it into English and then send it, and then I'll read it. How can you do it so perfect? The thing is, it's not perfect. There's nothing perfect. There's no perfect. There's no perfect. Get this behind your brains. There is no perfect in art. None. There isn't. There just isn't. There's no ultimate perfection in art. Hyperrealism is not perfection. <laughs> That's just replication. So understand that if you feel happy with it, if you feel happy and you're joyful and you, it brings you happiness and you make yourself smile whenever you do it, you're ready. That's good. You're bringing emotions into play. If it brings an emotional response out of you, odds are it's gonna bring an emotional response out of other people. So if you are ready, if you feel confident, then you are ready. You wish I was as good as you. You are as good as you. That is something to be proud of. <laughs> Who gives a shit about that random dude you found on the internet right now? Doesn't matter what I do. It's not about me. At all. Be proud of who you are, what you've done, what you can do. Okay? Because if you don't start being proud of you, no one will be. It starts with you. If you aren't proud of you, why should anybody else be? Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Can you draw me? No, no. And if I'm guessing you're like, like one of those like harlots from Instagram or TikTok. No. No, just because you are pretty doesn't mean everybody's going to jump and draw you. No. Uh-uh. You, you go away, you harlot. Attention. Attention, Hoochie. <laughs> Let's see. Mm, this could be a shoulder. Mm -hmm. She can be like... Like, l l let me put into perspective how it sounds whenever anyone comes on here and goes, can you draw me? Imagine that I'm taking, a, giving a class, right? Imagine that I'm just giving a class, like a class in a classroom. If anyone were to come in and just be like, excuse me, can I, can you draw me? Oh, I, I would kick you out of the classroom. 
Oh, Lainey Zimmerman, no request. Just thank you for all you do. Aw, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lainey. But if you do have a request for anything, even if it's something cute that you would like to see me draw, more than happy to do that for you, okay? Ava, can you draw me? No. I will not draw you. You egotistical, self-centered person. No. I can be used as a reference photo. <laughs> no, my dear. No, no, no. I appreciate your candor, but that won't happen. How many doodles do you have on average? Oh, I think I do about 100 doodles per page. At least. Close to it. I mean, each page has a ton of uh, drawings on them. So every single page has at least like, at least 50. Mm -mm. Oh, hey everybody. I'm just kidding, your artwork is good. I'm an, I'm an... No, you're not a digital artist. You're not a dig you're an artist that only likes to use digital for like digital stuff. That's it. You're not a digital artist. You're an artist that chooses to only use digital tools. That is the difference. You don't no, no one's just a digital artist, a traditional artist. No, you're just an artist that refuses to use other tools to improve your skill sets. That is what I see. So if you refuse to learn how to use a different skill set, you don't, you don't become special because of it. You don't become special because you only use digital. You don't get to call yourself a certain title for that. <laughs> You're an artist, so don't put yourself down. You're way more than just a digital artist, okay? You're not just a digital artist. You are an artist that happens to draw digitally right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start blocking people. So you keep it up. I mean, you keep it up. I'll just block you, and you don't get to either learn or see my videos or anything anymore. Yeah, you know, just keep it up. I I, I see everything. <laughs> So come on, come on, put it one more time. One more time, Miss Ava, one more time. I'm feeling, I'm feeling petty right now. I'm feeling petty, like giving back, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for reminding people that if they donate, they get their question answered. Mm -hmm. I love the positive messages in the stream about loving yourself so much. You just have to learn to, you have to learn to enjoy your life. And so many people just never get there because they're always thinking that there's some like fucking like, greener pastures on the other side of the rainbow and there isn't let me add, let me tell you something everybody doesn't know what the hell they're doing nobody knows what the hell they're doing no one no one does the stockbrokers they're still guessing this shit doctors they still guess this shit okay everybody's everybody is on the same page nobody really knows what they're doing but they're getting by but to, you know what? You might as well enjoy it. <laughs> you might as well enjoy the, the ride instead of thinking that it's always better for somebody else. Just enjoy yourself. Because someone told me, someone told me the best description for the meaning of life. Someone described the meaning in life of like in the, like the easiest way possible. And you guys want to know what it was? It was a comedian, I think. It was a comedian that said it. 
what is the meaning of like of life like what's the meaning of life and it's how you spend your time the passage of time right how you decide to spend your time is the meaning of life it's not a very complicated concept do you want to spend your time working at nine to five for other people cool if your concept of happiness comes from creating how long are you going to wait until you start doing it at a capacity that allows you to do it all the time how long 10 years 20 years could be tomorrow just saying like a lot of the times it's fear uncertainty but uncertainty feels a lot less scary when you know you love something very much it's very much so akin to a marriage or a relationship because this is your relationship with you this is your relationship with your imagination with your creativity so how much are you willing to prioritize this relationship with your creativity and nurture it as if something that you really wanted? And that's something to think about. That's something to really think about because it, it comes down to it like it's going to come down to it at one point. You're either going to have to make the decision to either pursue it full time, pursue it like with your whole heart so that you can see if you have what it takes or you're going to end up regretting that you never got a chance to do it. And regret is a bitch. Regret is a bitch and a half. So I'd rather see if I have the guts and the goal to do something that I've been wanting to do my whole life. Just try and do it. Just what's the harm? Worst case scenario, I do version one, right? That's it. Worst case scenario, it's version one of whatever I want to do. An animation, cool, version one. Guess what happens? Version one, version two is gonna be better than version one. And then when you get to like version three, you're gonna be like, wow, I'm so glad that I started because version one and two suck. <laughs> because every single time you create something, you're gonna be better at it. So by the time you get to version three, Version one and two are going to be so beyond what you've already done that you're going to feel guilty almost releasing it. But it can't get there if you do not start. If you don't start now, when? It's going to take years to finish some of your guys' knowledge bases to be able to get to where you want. So when do you want to start? When are you going to take it serious? When are you going to sit down and actually think, hey, this is something I've wanted for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, six months, whatever distance, whatever time you want, you know? How badly do I want it? And that's going to be the question that is going to be very prevalent <laughs> in everything that I say, because how badly do you want it? Not enough to stay in on a Saturday night, not to go out with your buddies. Is that enough? Do you want it enough to be able to uh, eventually quit your job so that you can try your hardest to pursue it full time? Maybe. It's scarier the more people depend on you too. 
if you have people that like depend on you like a family, that's terrifying. Because now it's not just you. Maybe you can survive a high cup of some noodles and ramen and shit. But when you have kids and you have family members like wives and stuff like that, that becomes incredibly more difficult. That decision becomes incredibly more taxing. So understanding that if you are in a position right now that allows you to go for it, like with every fucking fiber of your being, just go for it. And because at one point you might not have that chance. And as we get older, those chances diminish and those dreams die. So be careful how long you take before you begin on your journey. Because if you don't start now, that's just an extra day that you are away from your goal. And how many of those days are going to add up before some accident happens, some incident, some disease? Another COVID, something like that. Put that some thought, put some thought into that. He was taking suggestions for people were going bonkers on here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, whenever you guys get all crazy, I have to like use the same concept that I do with my puppy. I have to like just stop paying attention to you guys for a little bit until you calm down. <laughs> and it's like, okay, all right, all right, kids. If you guys don't behave, Rod is gonna turn this car around and we're gonna go back to circles. We ain't gonna be drawing no dinosaurs. We're gonna be drawing circles all day. <laughs> I really, I think you're really talented. Thank you. Uh, I just tuned in and I just hear what to hear. I just start drawing again. That's the main reason why I'm here right now. And I've been working harder lately. Despite doing art, I love it now. I really want to tell my story. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. That's amazing, man. I appreciate you. Like, the people like you, like people that you that want to actually like get there, you know, are the people that will. $10 Brent. Hey, man, you are seriously the best. You have helped me so much. Please never stop. I rarely get to catch you live and I wish I could hang around. You're the best, man. No joke. Thank you. Oh, you're the best. Mr. Brent, is there something that you would like me to draw for you? Like, if you have anything, I, we can close out our sketch night with a cute animal of your choosing. How about that? Brent, you get to choose an animal. <laughs> and thank you so much for the donation. Donations like that allow me to buy equipment for my studio. They allow me to buy coffee for myself. <laughs> and they allow me to actually generally pay my bills. So it's nice when people do. I don't ask for them ever. I don't ask for donations. Honestly, I just don't. I don't like, I feel lucky doing it. But when people do, it's really cool. Do, 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 do. An artist, don't mind if I stop by. Hey, nothing, man. Can you can you write Domza? Domza. There you go. Cool. You came across my YouTube shorts. Yay! Nice. Yay! <laughs> A mischievous cat. All right, so let's draw a mischievous cat. And as we draw a mischievous cat, I am going to say thank you to everybody in the channel for tuning in today. 
Thank you guys for coming on my stream. Thank you for allowing me to teach you something and allowing me to talk to you guys about my opinions on certain things. You guys giving me a little platform to talk on is a beautiful, lovely thing that I can't ever say enough thank you for. We are reaching the 80,000 follower mark on, on YouTube, which is awesome. We have broken the 200,000 on Instagram and we broke 320,000 on TikTok. So that's beautiful. Don't envy my talent. Don't envy it. But you can learn it all. I teach you guys how to do this every day. You don't have to envy me. I can I give you guys my knowledge completely freely and openly and I don't keep anything to myself. So if you guys feel like learning a little bit more and you guys are jealous of my artwork, all you need to do is go search for that knowledge in my channels and you guys will have the ability to draw just like me. So there's only one excuse. And that's if only if you have no arms and no will to actually follow through. So, courts on your end. <laughs> you have access to the knowledge. And once again, I'll say it. How badly do you want it? Okay. You need to want it more than anyone else. You. You. I'm pointing to you. Okay. Have a lovely day, everybody. If you guys want to catch any of the past streams, all the past streams are on YouTube. If you guys like to help, all the books that I have are in my bio. And if you guys ever come and join my stream, make sure to like and share the stream so that you guys can have the ability to help me out as much as I help you guys out too. If you guys learned anything today, I recommend that you guys put that into practice by drawing something cool for yourselves. Make sure that you draw something cool with any knowledge that you guys learned today so that you can cement that in stone and you don't lose that knowledge. That is the most crucial step and a lot of people forget to do it. So make sure to take at least five minutes after our stream today and make sure to draw something that you find cool with something that you learned from today. With that, You'll level up a little bit, and you'll never be able to unlearn it. Take care, everybody. Love you all. See you guys next, next time for another stream. And, yeah. Toodaloo.